we're gonna go over how you can swim faster. The science back approach, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so recently Kudo and Matsuda studied how elite swimmers entered their hand into the water during a crawl stroke, okay, so during the freestyle. And when they were analyzing their test subjects, they wanted to see specific examples. So they were fortunate enough that they got two groups of 11 swimmers. And when they took these 22 different swimmers, the two groups of 11, they were able to analyze them and lump them into a position where one group was the slower group, okay? So the slower group could swim at about 81% of the world record. And that was on average of what their time was compared to the 100 meter world record in the crawl stroke in the freestyle. The faster group on average could swim at 91% of what that 100 meter world record was. And then when they were analyzing this research or when they were actually going through these testing subjects, they instructed them on what they were looking for and they got them in the pool, they would push off the wall and they actually had reflective tape on their fingers and they had nine cameras outside of the pool and then another 18 cameras underwater analyzing different positions. And the big factor that they were looking at was what type of hand position in different points of the swimming stroke was going on, what type of movement was even happening with the trunk, and then what type of impact on hydrodynamic effects did we see or did they end up seeing from changes in rapid hand positions. So if we look at them, what are these actual phases of the stroke? And that first one is going to be the down phase. Okay, so think about someone swimming here, they come down, all right, so they, when they come down into the water, from the time that they enter to the time that they're done going downward, that's the down phase, okay? And then the next phase would be the in phase, okay? So we're going here, bringing that hand in to the midline, okay? And from that point of going backwards to the midline and then right in line there, that would be the in phase, okay? So what was happening during the in phase? What was happening with the hand? What was happening with different rates of acceleration? What were they looking at with acceleration, stroke rates, stride length, all of those different impacts that we can see that have a positive aspect on the actual outcome of swimming faster, okay? So they wanted to see, all right, down phase, in phase, and then finally that up sweep, which would be from the end of the in phase, okay, the end of the in sweep, all the way back to the up position where they were going from the midline and then bringing that hand out of the water. And one thing we've got to keep in mind is that each phase is going to have a different impact on your hand. And if you can enter the water at a specific angle, that's gonna decrease the amount of slowing down that might actually happen. And then as the athletes would accelerate during the in phase, we can see what's happening with the actual hand position and also potentially what's happening with the trunk. And then as that hand is coming out of the water and it's slowing down, what type of negative impact might happen on acceleration. So they were looking at what was going on with the hand positioning in each point of the phase or each point of the sweep, what was going on with stride length, with stride rates, and then ultimately what type of propulsion are we gonna see between the two groups? Why is one group faster than the other? And the interesting part here is that during two of the phases, they really didn't see much of a change. So again, they had them in a pool. They were doing two sets of 25 meter swims. And then what they wanted to do is around 12 and a half to 20 meters, they wanted to break down where is this swimmer the fastest? And then what is happening with that hand direction in each point of the phase? And they did this with all 22 swimmers. So when they're going from the end of the down phase to the end of the in phase, there was usually three changes in position of the hand. And this was, common between the two different groups, all right? And then when we looked at, all right, what are they doing from the up phase? So as they're coming out of the water, there's two different changes in the hand position. So now we can see, all right, we know that we can go in. So we have a downward entry. We know that there's a vertical aspect where the hand starts to come up during the in phase. We know that there's somewhat of a change in how our hand might be rotating, specific to the elbow joint, specific to even like our brachioradialis, and then even what our trunk is going to be doing. And then we have that backwards sweep here that helps us propel our body forward. And then that next aspect is that when we come out of the pool, we have to minimize the amount of drag from bringing our hand forward, okay? But the interesting part here is that during the in phase and during the up sweep, both of those groups had a very similar aspect on what their hand positions were doing. Now, here comes the interesting part. And I think the take home part here is that when they were breaking down the different positions, they noticed that the faster group 
had a much different down phase. So they actually entered the pool different enough from the slower group that it had a statistically significant impact on the overall outcome of their swimming speed. And so the hand position was noticed to have a much faster entry in a vertical position. Okay, so going forward, and then lateral, so almost turning that hand in. And we can see then that would minimize drag. So think about if I'd enter the water here, okay, and the water's going like this, my hand would create a massive amount of drag. But if I'm a little bit more vertical on that entry, it's gonna have a little bit less drag because the surface level won't be as high. Think about when an airplane takes off, okay? If an airplane takes off, all the flaps are down. They want more lift to help it take off and rise. That's what would happen in the pool if I would have all the water hit here, my trunk would actually rise and I would slow down. I'd have more lift. The same exact thing happens when a plane is landing. They raise those flaps out, okay, to get more surface contact to help that lower, and now they have more air contact, more wind contact, and it's the same exact principles that we would then see if you're coming into the water here versus coming into it on a little bit more of a vertical area where there's less surface contact, okay? So if we can enter more vertically and a little bit more laterally, then we can get into the position of acceleration a little bit quicker, okay? Then as we get into that position of acceleration a little bit quicker, now we can apply a little bit more force. And some of the other interesting aspects here is that as the swimmers were entering, there was a little bit of a trunk rotation. And that trunk rotation would occur, they would get back to neutral with that trunk rotation as they would pull here, which would help them use a little bit more of their abs and even a little bit more of their lats. And then that trunk rotation would then occur again as the arm would be exiting the pool or exiting the water. So those are some of the main factors that we have to think about is there's gonna be two to three rapid changes in our hand. So as coaches, as strength coaches especially, we have to think about, all right, what can we do with this information. We know that elite swimmers, after this research now has been released, enter the pool more effectively. So we need to make sure that if we're entering the pool more effectively, we have more thoracic extension. We have a little bit more mobility in that position, but we also need to make sure that we can control that posture really well. So we need to make sure we're doing things like reflexive movements, even doing mobility exercises, even getting into like a pull-up position with crazy amounts of thoracic extension to help us enter that pool more effectively. I also think there's a point and doing specific types of action work with an elastic band or even with a cable and even doing something potentially like a front lever position to try and exaggerate a little bit more of that lateral entry. And as we would enter in there, trying to think about how the squeeze here in the, in the trunk and in the latch can then lead to greater production in acceleration. So although this information is very specific to the techniques being used in the pool and all swimming coaches should be educated on this recent study, I think it plays a major role in how we can start to emulate one, world-class swimmers, but two, what type of technique are we teaching swimmers at an early age when they're entering into the pool with those specific hand positions? And then what can they do with their hand? Which way should they be rotating? Why should they be rotating that way? What should they be thinking about when they get through that in-sweep? What should they be thinking about when they get through that up-sweep? How can we minimize drag during the up-sweep? How can we minimize drag during the down phase? All those different things play a massive role that we can just constantly refine and build upon as we're developing these elite young athletes or just trying to educate them on proper mechanics in the pool. But also looking at it as a strength coach and saying, okay, what can we do in the weight room? How can we increase mobility? When we increase mobility, we're gonna see a better strength output component, okay? So if we think through the lens of the technique, we can then analyze the positions in the upper back, in the lats, all of these areas that we need to lengthen, all of these areas that we need to provide a large amount of stability in because that will lead to better mobility and train that with specific strength measures and also with specific measures of high speed power output. Okay, so we've gotta look through this research, we have to understand what it's telling us, and then we have to figure out how we can apply that later on in the weight room as these elite athletes start to age and they start to get better and better and better and more refined with their technique. So take this, comment down below with what you think we need to work on inside the swimming world specific to strength-based training. If you guys need help with your swimming programming, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS store, you can pick up Peak Strength for seven free days of training. You can cancel at any time. The worst thing that's gonna happen is that you're gonna get five free workouts. Because remember, freaks, 
If you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.